My name is Hihiko Yoshimatsu, and I work at Cancer Institute Hospital in Tokyo, Japan. I would like to thank Dr. Santa Maria and his team for putting together this amazing webinar. Today, I am going to talk about skip flaps. I have no disclosures. So these are the things you may know about skip flaps. You can get a thin hairless skin battle with minimal donor site morbidity with inconspicuous scar. And then you can, you can include iliac bone flaps. And these are myths regarding skip flaps. You can only get small skin paddle, like this one here in my free lateral digital flap for reconstruction. You can only get short pedicle and the skip flap will be, are very susceptible, susceptible, will be very susceptible to congestion. So you will need leeches and the pedicles are very small. So why am I talking about skip flap? I think learning how to do a skip flap is especially important for junior attendings and residents out there because I truly believe that the skip flap is going to be the workhorse flap in the near future. Aside from the low donor site morbidity, there are three reasons why I think the skip flap is one of the best flaps. One is its versatility, two, stability, and facility. A skip flap can be very large, actually, in 30 centimeters in this case. It can get larger to cover 20 by 18 centimeter defects. You can also have go chimeric, including the bone and sartorius muscle. And you can even do breast reconstruction. Or if you facile with skip flaps, you can even do a phalloplasty. Now, if you, think, if you think about the stability of the skip flap, I looked into 35 consecutive cases, patients who underwent reconstruction using skip flaps after sarcoma re reconstruction, after sarcoma resection. And out of 35 skip flaps, I had three complications, one take back, and I lost one flap, but this was due to mechanical pulling of the pedicle during night. I had no congestion of the flap, no partial necrosis, and I had one bleeding. And I, so actually I had two total complication of the flap and one seroma of the donor site, of the donor site which subsided after compression. And actually, the skip flap did better in terms of post-operative complications when compared to other flaps. And then with skip flap, you always have backup plans. The first choice will be superficial branch and then deep branch and SIEA. In reality, the skip flap is one of the easiest flaps to harvest because the whole pedicle runs within the adipose layer, which means that there are no intramuscular dissections whatsoever. You do not have to keep on ligating small branches to the muscle. So that's why you can harvest a skip flap all by yourself. So how do you harvest a skip flap? Without further ado, let's get right to it. I will first talk about the easiest method superficial branch-based skip flaps, and then go on to deep branch-based skip flaps. And then finally, I will be talking about skip flap combined with SIEA for coverage of very large defects. So for superficial branch-based skip flaps, this is a basic anatomy of the SCIA. After its takeoff from the femoral artery, the, super, uh, the, the SCIA, bifurcates into the superficial branch and the deep branch. And the deep branch gives off branches to the muscle, the sartorius muscle, and the iliac bone. In 2016, I proposed this proximal to distal elevation of the skip flap, in which you first look for the pedicle and then design the skin paddle. Pre-op imaging using ultrasonography has made my life much easier. 
I used to use the handheld Doppler and it wasn't bad. But after I started using ultrasonography, the whole process of flap elevation became so much easier because all you have to do is find a pedicle and cut out the skin paddle. It's like one, two punch. The use of ultrasonography is described in my latest paper coming out this month in Journal of Reconstructive, Reconstructive Microsurgery. So the trick of using ultrasonography is you look first for the distal portion of the SIEA because that's where the, the, the distal portion is where the SCIA runs superficially. So usually you should look for the pedicle around the ASIS. And this is a video from the ultrasonography. You can see the nice pulsation of the superficial branch and the SCIV. And when you use the ultrasonography, you can trace the pedicle all the way to its terminal branches. So in this way, you can design the skin, the skin paddle very safely. You should design a skin paddle so that the SCIA and the SCIV run in the middle of a flap. And this will avoid malperfusion of the flap. So again, the superficial branch based skin flap elevation is very simple. It's like one, two, punch. One, find a pedicle, two, cut out the skin paddle. So what you do is you make a small incision on top of the proximal part of the pedicle and you identify and dissect out the pedicle. And then all you have to do is cut the skin paddle. Again, find the pedicle and then cut out the skin paddle. Once you identify the pedicle, skip flap elevation is almost done. So when you get used to it, you will be able to elevate the flap within 30 minutes. When you want a thin skip flap, you can elevate the skip flap above the superficial fascia or actually right beneath the superficial fascia. But in this case, you have to make sure that the pedicle is included in the flap because if you go too thin, you could miss the pedicle. So to wrap up the superficial branch based skip flaps, it is a very straightforward elevation with no intramuscular dissection. Use of ultrasonography will greatly facilitate the elevation. And one point to note is that you should always isolate the artery and vein under a microscope because they can be hard to distinguish. In this picture right here, it is impossible after cutting the, after severing these pedicle, it will be impossible to distinguish the artery from the vein. So again, you should do it under a microscope. Going on to the deep branch base skip flaps. When you need a pretty large skip, or when you want to go chimeric, or when you just burn down the superficial branch, and this could happen, or maybe your resident just killed it you have to find a deep branch. And it is this deep branch. So how do you find this deep branch? This is a paper I published in 2019, and it talks about use of the transverse branch. So it is this transverse branch right here that you should look for. It will come out from the deep branch and travel laterally. So what you should do is make a make an curvilinear incision lateral to the ASI, ASIS all the way to the deep fascia and you will find this transverse branch. The transverse branch always runs into this deep branch. So what you have to do after finding the transverse branch is you trace it backwards. You trace, you trace it proximally till it reaches the deep branch. And it is from this deep branch that you'll find perforators to the skin paddle and to the sartorius muscle and to the iliac bone. I looked into the cadavers to see if this transverse branch existed. I could find transverse branch in all 20 specimens. And the average length, the, the average distance from the ASIS to this transverse branch was 2.5 centimeters. 
This is a video showing this transverse branch guided elevation of a deep branch. They skip up, you make an incision lateral to the ASIS, go all the way to this deep fascia till you find this transverse branch right here. And from this point, all you have to do is trace it back for two to three centimeters. And it doesn't matter if you damage it because you're only using this transverse branch as a guide. So you keep on tracing it backwards till you find the deep branch right here. This is the deep branch. And after finding the deep branch, the dissection will be straightforward. You should include the bone branch if you want the iliac bone flap and sartorius muscle branch if you want the muscle flap. And this will show the transverse branch and the deep branch. This is a case with a large skip flap, huge sarcoma of the lower leg, which resulted in 27 by 12 centimeter defect. I love skip so much that I just want to go skip this time too. So I trace this transverse branch to the deep branch and I elevated a 28 centimeter long skip flap. The width was 13 centimeters. And this is another BD of skip flap. Um, you can elevate a very wide flap and still close the daughter site primarily. You cannot do this with ALT or TAP or lateral dorsi muscle flap. After seven months, the donor side looks good. The flap survived completely. And this is a case of SCIA base iliac bone flaps. I reported its case series in 2018. And in the same year, I flew over to Vienna to do a cadaver study with my friend John. And I found that the maximum perfusion, maximum perfused SCIA iliac bone flap is 10 by two centimeters, counting from this anterior superior iliac spine. In this young female, 30 year old young woman, a giant cell tumor of the distal radius. She was young, so we decided to go for SCIA based skip flaps, the iliac bone flap. I traced this deep branch right here and elevated a two by four iliac bone flap. The donor site looks pretty good. It was very inconspicuous. And since it was vascularized after 10 months, you could start seeing the bone union. This, uh, this is a very elderly male with osteomyelitis of the calcaneus. He actually fell from the roof of his house and his plate got infected, so we needed a bone flap. In this guy, uh, we elevated a pretty big piece, four by six centimeters of iliac bone. And after debriefment, a thorough several episodes of debriefment, we press fit this bone flap in the defect of the calcaneus. And I always take bone scintigraphy two to three weeks afterwards. And the perfusion of the bone looked perfect. This is six months out. You can see perfect bone union with this CT images. And again, the donor site looks pretty good. So to wrap up the deep branch based skip flaps, you can have a longer pedicle up to 10 centimeters. The dissection can be a bit tedious because branches to the sartorius muscle and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerves have to be ligated carefully. And our final topic today is skip SIEA combined flaps. This was reported last year in this paper in microsurgery. So this to cover this defect after resection of this large sarcoma of the left knee with a 20 by 18 centimeter defect and a convex shaped defect, you will need a large skin paddle. In this case, I recommend combining the skip flap with SIA flap 
Again, I always use the ultrasonography to check the pulsation of the superior branch and the SCIV right here. And for the SIEA, again, to, on the left, you can see nice pulsation and nice SIEV. And when you're trying to do this bilobe flap, you should always check the bifurcation. So in this case, right here, the SEIA and SIA share the common trunk, which actually did, this is an intraoperative picture, SCIA and SIA share the common trunk. So I could get away with one arterial anastomosis. The flap could cover the knee defect and the donor site could be closed primarily. And this is what it looked like one month post-op. So in these, this kind of cases, pre-op ultrasonography or CTA is highly recommended right here, SIEA and SCIA, because in 65% of the patients, SIEA and SCIA share a common trunk in either side of the groin. If they do not, you will have to do two arterial, arterial anastomosis. In this 75-year-old fisherman, he also had sarcoma of the knee, which ended up in 21 centimeter defect. It was very big. We designed a skip SIA combined bilobe flaps. In this case, the SIA and SCIA did not share a common trunk, so we had to do two arterial anastomosis, but it wasn't bad. The donor site could be closed primarily. And after two and a half weeks, he started walking. And this is what it looked like, what he looked like after a year. He was back to his exercise. The donor site looked very beautiful. And he was back to his fishing again fishing octopus. So in this skip SIA combined flaps, this can cover very large defects up to 20 by 20 centimeters. The bilobe design allows coverage of three dimensional convex defects, and it is especially useful for coverage of the knee, the elbow, and the scalp. Minimal donor site morbidity with no muscular sacrifice, but pre-op imaging is highly recommended. This is the algorithm for skin paddle only skip flaps. You should use superficial branch whenever you can find it because it's easier. If you can find it or if you damage it, go for deep branch and then you can go for SIEA as a backup. For our larger defects, by lobe flaps. For lateral lobe, you can elevate the skip flap with a superficial branch or deep branch. And for, as for the medial lobe, if you cannot find the SIA or SIA seems too small, you can go for the DIA. The advantages of skip flap is that the skip pedicle can be anastomosed to recipient vessels of any size because the diameter of the SCIA is usually around one millimeter. It was 1.2 millimeter in our case series. Almost any small recipient artery if found can be used. If no small recipient vessels can be found, an antecide anastomosis can be performed to larger source vessels. And this contributed to the very high percentage of anastomoses performed within the defect in 97% of our sarcoma case series. And this means that you will not need a very long pedicle. As for the disadvantage of skip flaps, short pedicle length is a major disadvantage of a skip flap. It goes only up to 10 centimeters. So going back to the myths regarding zip flaps, small skin paddle, not really, it can be pretty big. Short pedicle, this is true. It can be, it can be as long as 10 centimeters, but not, it will never be as long as an ALT or tap flap. So when you're trying to go over the zone of injury, I would not recommend the use of skip flap. Unstable flap perfusion, will you need leeches? Now, I think skip is a very stable flap if you include the SCIV and the issue with small pedicle, but it won't be a problem for young microsurgeons like you guys. 
I appreciate your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.